Hello and welcome to week 25 of a 52-week series for the Web Pro on what every web administrator needs to know to be successful in this space. My name is Scott Forsyth and today I want to talk to you about a specific task using URL Rewrite, which is to use URL Rewrite to grant or deny access to a site or set of sites. Basically, we want to create IP restriction functionality using URL Rewrite. So I'm assuming that you already know URL Rewrite or have already watched my previous URL Rewrite lessons. I'm not planning to recover the basics in this particular lesson. So let's get started. First, let me show you my test environment. We have the server set up here, and this is just a test server. We have Contoso.com with a real extremely pretty page you can see here. And also, when I show you the Chrome browser, this one here, I'll make sure to remember to mention this is actually on my own computer and it's not within the remote desktop session. So I need one that's in another environment. And so we have this Chrome, which is this cleaner blue, and then we have this one here, which is this darker blue. Those are the two. And so I'll differentiate between those two as we move along. So first, let's look at our traditional way, and let's look at the case scenario why this, we want this a little bit different than usual. So if we go to Contosa.com, there's a functionality in IS that's been around for years, and that's our domain restrictions. And so what we want to do is let's add a couple allow. Let's add a range of 10.240.0.0255255500. So it's going to do anything that starts with 10.240. And we're going to allow, let's say, one more example IP. And then if we set the feature functionality to by default deny, then what this means is that anyone coming, and actually I'm going to click on my own, this is my own browser now, and contosa.com, if I refresh, notice that we see access denied. So this is the old fashioned way of doing it, and it actually works great if you want to absolutely deny to a website. But now I have something a little bit unique. Let's go to, now notice it does allow me to use this on the local machine. Now if I go to a different URL, staging.contosa.com, Notice this extra wording. Welcome administrator, you, are, you now have access to the staging version of this site. This is calling the exact same page. And I have it here in default.aspx. And we're saying if the HTTP host is staging.contosa.com, we're going to write this extra wording. So what we have is a testing environment set up where we show something different depending on the URL. We do not want to allow this welcome administrator wording or any of this information, the special privileged information in here, to the outside world, only to people from approved IPs. And so what we want to do, we can't do that with the standard IP restrictions. The issue we run into is it's all or nothing for the site. So today, I want to show you how we can use URL rewrite to do this. So let's clean up this test here, and I can just say revert to parent and that's going to delete everything. So now on my own computer, notice the darker blue, or the grayish, and I refresh that, welcome to Conto, so it now works. So here's how we would do it. Let's get started in URL Rewrite. We'll do it at the global level. We'll go to URL Rewrite, and we're going to leverage what's called Rewrite Maps. And this allows us to create a static listing. Now we can't use dynamic rules, only static rules, in here, and I'll show you how we can do dynamic in a minute too. And we're going to add one, and let's just say authorized admin IPs. And so now we're in it. Now we can add some mappings. So let's say an authorized one would be, well, let's, my own IP is 10.240.5.22. So let's give it permission. 10.240.5, what did I say? 22. And we're going to just say a new value of 1 is all we need to a condition on it. And again, we can pretend that there's a lot more addresses here. And is that exactly what I typed last time? It is. So there we go. So now we have just a list. Now, in an example of a real world situation I just worked on this last week, we had a list that went way down to here of legitimate IPs for all the administrators connecting from different locations, both branch offices and also some remote users from their own location. So now we have a map that we can use. And so we'll go back two steps into our URL rewrite rule. And now what I want to do is we want to flag it. We could do this in one rule if we want, but I want to show it in two parts because it allows us to use it with more complex rules later on. 
And so we're going to create a blank rule, and we're going to say flag authorized admins. And we could use regular expressions or wildcards. In this case, let's use wildcard, just a little bit easier to demo. Watch my previous videos if you want to see more on the regex. And actually, my other rule in a minute, I'll use regex again. Okay, so now what we'll do is for the condition, we're going to say if. Now, this is a little bit different. This is how we use our rewrite map. We're going to say authorized admin IPs if it ever matches anything in remote address, that's the client's IP, and so if, it, if it's found, there's a compare, and the pattern is a 1, then we're going to say server variable, this is kind of neat, we're going to add a server variable that's available to us later on. We're going to say HTTP, and we're going to say authorized admin, and so we'll say yes. And we could do whatever Boolean value. I do it this way just because HTTPS variable uh, just does a yes and no. So I just did the same here. But you can make that a 1 or a 0 or whatever. And we're going to say no actual action because it really is doing one action here, which is adding that variable. So let's apply. Now, understand, this is only part of the process. But let's take a peek at what this will look like. And I have a quick script I've shown in the past, too, with the various variables. And notice here, if I come in from an authorized IP, which is on the local machine, and it shows the authorized admin is yes. But now, if I test, this is my own desktop browser now. Let's try our VARs. Now notice it's not authorized. So now we have a difference between the two, and they're flagged based on this variable. So now let's create a rule here. And so we're going to create a new blank rule, and we're going to say block unauthorized users. And we'll use regular expressions this time. And so in our condition, we're going to say HTTP host matches the pattern of the starts with staging. And we're going to say a dot, literal dot, which actually is like this and then dot asterisk, which means anything. So anything that starts with staging dot, and we're going to say match all, which is the default. So it has to match both that and also, here we go, we're going to say HTTP X authorized admin. And actually we're going to say does not match the pattern of yes. So if they're coming to staging, but they're not authorized, then what we're going to do is we're going to throw a custom response of a 403.0, which is forbidden, and if all is right, what's going to happen now is there are two different situations. One will get forbidden and one not to the staging URL. So we'll go to staging. This user here worked great. Now on my own computer, if I switch to staging, notice we have a forbidden, work perfectly. Now we can also switch this to www does work. So you can see they can access the public website but not the staging website even though it's on the exact same site. Something that's not possible with the standard IP restrictions. This is where URL rewrite comes in handy. So this is the essence of it but let's take this a little bit further. And what we saw here is just static IPs. And we're going to go to our URL rewrite again. And if we want to add a new IP, it's straightforward. Let's find out what my IP is. And let's just do what's my IP.org. Gives me my IP. And so we will go into this one here. We'll add a mapping entry. And now, if we go to staging, it works. See how easy it is to add it. So just simply add IPs to this list, and they've been granted access. But we want to now change a couple things here. Let's remove this person and remove this one. So now really no one's been granted access, just two bogus examples there. So we refresh, and it's forbidden. And again, we'll try on the other one here. It's forbidden as well. So now what we want to do is let's show how we can do an IP address range. 
which is something the URL rewrite can kind of do, not, not fully, but we'll show you how we're going to do this. So we go to our flag authorized admins rule, and don't forget, these run in order, so if you have some important rules underneath, make sure that these two are right up at the top. You want to use the move up and move it up there. The rewrite maps can only be used for static entries. You can't do a compare on it. So what we want to be able to do is handle a situation with more of a, like a subnet mask. And so here's what I would do. Now understand it's not fully supported. And here's how we do it. We need to make sure that you're using regular. Actually, wildcards work great in this situation. And we're going to say remote address matches the pattern of 10.240.asterisk.asterisk. Now notice this will only work for a clean slash 24 and slash 16, uh, which is a subnet mask set. And it won't work for partial subnets if you get into that. Unfortunately, uh, you could, yeah, there's not any clean ways to do that unless you can get it to match a pattern of this type. And I guess if you are really complex, you could with the regex and, you know, first character is up to a two and second is within a certain address range and stuff like that, but not really meant for that. But now this, we see, we should have access will be granted to the local one and not the remote. So let's try it out. So the local one does not yet have access, so let's just double check this. And we're saying, okay, here's where a mistake is. And rather than a match all, this has to switch to a match any. Because if any of these are approved, and it's, it's never going to be possible for all to be approved. So apply this, refresh, and now you can see this works, but on this machine, it still doesn't work. So this worked beautifully. And so yeah, just to recap, let's look at these again, and actually I'll show you the actual uh, syntax in a minute too, just in case you can compare. We see URL rewrite is we have one that flags the admins, and we just do that based on, does it match any of our rewrite map plus any customized ones that are more like a subnet type and then if it does or basically it flags it and then we can do a special rule based on this condition we've basically added a new condition option that we have available in all future rules after this rule so let's just take a quick look at what this looks like And you can pause this if you want, just to get a screen capture of what this is. But you can see that we have our authorized map. And at this point, there's nothing in it, but you just simply add to this. And we can see we flagged our authorized admins with this rule. And we're blocking unauthorized users with this rule here. And uh, nothing really significant off to the edge of the screen. URL rewrite is extremely flexible, it gives you a lot of control, and this now allows you even further access to use custom IP address configuration and logic within your rules. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope to see you again next week.